Senator Babette. Thank you, President. My question is for, is for the Minister representing the Prime Minister, Minister Wong. Minister, the Australian energy market operator released a report which concludes that the closure of the little coal-fired power station will increase electricity prices even further next year. Now, Australian families are already struggling to pay their power bills and they are reeling, Minister, from the news in the budget this week that power prices are set to increase by 56 per cent. Now, given the experts are now revealing that the closure of coal-fired power stations increase people's power bills, will the government commit to keep the little coal-fired power station open to give Australian families cost of living relief who are struggling right now, Minister? Thank you, Senator Babette. Minister Wong. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, President, and thank you to Sen the Senator for his question, Senator Babette for his question. And uh, there is no doubt that the uh, problems in the energy grid, and in particular the exiting of supply, which has occurred over the last nine years, is one of the factors contributing to higher energy prices. One of the factors. Uh, and I know that Senator may have a different view about this, but it is very clear from advice from energy market operators, from advice from energy market suppliers, that the cheapest form of new energy is renewables. Now, I know those opposite, in particular, have such difficulty with that, and their difficulty with it has contributed to the mess and chaos uh, that we see in energy markets in this country to date. Uh, and I know that the senator uh, is concerned, as, as we are, as all we all are, uh, by rising energy prices and the impact that has on family budgets. What uh, we Senator Rennick. I'll take the interjection from, Sen from the senator opposite, Senator Rennick, who just asserted renewables are more, more expensive. And that, that, that falsehood that is, is, is one of the reasons why energy markets are in such a mess. Under you, four gigawatts exited of dispatchable capacity exited the system and you put one gigawatt in. Now, though anybody who understands basic supply and demand knows that if you reduce, if you reduce supply, you're gonna, uh, there's going to be a f an effect on prices. So that is the case. So, Senator Babette, we may not agree on everything, but I do agree with you. This requires urgent attention. Order. We believe, on the basis of the the advice that from from the industry. So this is this. Oh. Please resume your seat, Senator Wong. This question is from Senator Babette. He is one of our crossbenchers. He gets very little opportunity to ask questions because it's on a shared basis. And I would ask all senators to give him the respect that he deserves, that his answer be heard in silence. Thank you, Senator Wong. Thank you. Now, uh, Senator Babette, I know that one of the things people seek uh, is a solution which may involve taxpayers putting in uh, subsidies to keep open uh, uh, facilities which are not commercial. What is, re what is really required is a transformation of our electricity sector so we get more supply, uh, put more supply into the system and transform the grid. Uh, thank, uh, Senator Babette, first supplementary. Thank you, President. Minister, the Prime Minister, when asked about surging power bills this week, said that we're in this position because of external factors like the war in Ukraine. How is it that a generation, Minister, after the Soviet Union was defeated, we are now so dependent on Russia or anyone else for our energy needs? Minister Wong. Uh, I, look, I think there are a number of uh, factors which are affecting uh, energy prices. Uh, Who did that? The, the point about. Uh, order. Order. Order on both sides. Order. I remind all senators once again this is a question from Senator Bebet, and I would ask you to allow him to hear the answer, Minister Wong. Th thank you, uh, President. Uh, Se Senator Babette, Senator Babette I, I think the effect of the illegal and immoral war in Ukraine uh, is not so much an effect on Australia alone, but an effect on global energy markets. Yeah. Uh, and what is occurring uh, is we have a, a number of factors which are affecting our energy market. Uh, and global energy markets, and of course, contributing to inflation. In relation to Senator our Rennick. energy markets, uh, we have, as I said, first. Uh, 
Senator Rennick, I've called you to order on a number of times. I shouldn't have to keep doing that. Uh, Senator Rennick, it's, it's not your opportunity to answer back. I've called you to order. I expect order. Senator Wong. Uh, thank you. Uh, so the, the, uh, the war in Ukraine is affecting global energy markets that is driving inflation and it is also increasing energy costs. And if you speak... Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, your time has expired, Senator Wong. Uh, Senator Babette, second supplementary. Senator McKenzie. Order. Order. I have Senator Babette on his feet waiting to ask his second supplementary. Senator Thank Babette. you, President. This week, the Green German government has pulled down wind turbines, wind turbines to expand a coal mine across Europe. Coal-fired power stations are being reopened. And there are 300 new coal-fired power stations being built around the world right now. Why don't we join the rest of the world and build new coal-fired power stations so that Australian families, businesses, manufacturers can have cheap power bills once again and we can save our standard of living? Thank you, Senator Babette. Minister Wong. Uh, thank you, President. Well, uh, we share your desire that we ha to reduce energy prices. What I would say to you in relation to coal-fired power here in Australia is the market has not funded investment in new coal-fired power. The market has made a decision. So, I, look, I, I know that Senator Canavan wants taxpayers to fund it, but the market has chosen not to invest uh, in more coal-fired power generation because the market has made an assessment that renewables are cheaper. In relation to Germany, uh, I am well aware of what is occurring in Germany. It, was a, uh, it has been a part of our discussion both uh, between the foreign minister and I, but also at the, at the foreign minister's meeting at the G20. Europe is doing the right thing, seeking to reduce reliance on Russian energy. And we support that. We support that because President Putin is looking to weaponise the, uh, the weaponise energy supply. So it is the right thing Senator to do Canada. for the European Union and, in particular, Germany, to look to make themselves more resilient in Thank the face you, of Senator that weaponisation. Time has expired. Yeah, that's my kind of party. Be a